Now friends, here is your question number 8. In this question, it is given for a reaction. What is that reaction? H2O2, hydrogen peroxide in alkaline medium in the presence of iodide ion getting changed into H2O and O2. So, this is the decomposition of H2O2. The proposed mechanism is as given below. In this case, you have the proposed mechanism in the first step H2O2 get combined with iodide ion to give you H2O and IO negative. This is the slow step. Further, H2O2 combines with IO negative to give you H2O, I negative ion and O2. This is the fast step. And you should always know that slow step or the slowest step is the rate determining step that you should know. Now here, write rate law for the reaction. You have to attempt this further. Write the overall order of the reaction. Further, out of the steps 1 and 2, which one is rate determining step? that you should answer. So, for the first one write the rate law for the reaction you will obtain 1 mark and for writing the overall order of the reaction and out of the step 1 and 2 which one is rate determining step writing these two you will get 1 mark. You can answer this by first analyzing the slowest step as it is clearly written here that it is the slow step or the slowest step you can represent it in this manner H2O2 combined with I negative ion to give you H2O and I O negative and on that basis you can find out the rate law because rate law represent the rate expression and that is dependent on the rate determining step that is slowest step. So, this rate law is R that is directly proportional to the concentration of H2O2 or the active mass of H2O2 and I negative ion. You can represent this rate law in this manner and if you represent it you will get one mark for writing this. After that there was a second part write the overall order of the reaction. Now what is the order of the reaction? Order of the reaction is the sum of the powers of the reactant those are present in rate expression. So, in case of rate expression you can clearly see one reactant is that and this is the second one. So, what would be the order of the reaction? The overall order of the reaction is second order that is why you can simply write it as this is second order reaction or the order is 2. Now, after that this third point is there out of step 1 and step 2 which one is the rate determining step? This question you have already answered that the rate determining step is always the slowest step or the slow step of the reaction. So, what is the slow step? The slow step is the rate determining step. So, here you can clearly see that in this case you can mark first step that is the slow step and it is the rate determining step. For writing these two points one is the order of the reaction you are getting half mark and then for the second by writing the rate determining step you will get half mark. So, overall two marks you are obtaining for this particular question. After that you have the next question that is question number 9. Let us take another two marker question from the section B and that is question number 9. Just have a look on the question. When MnO2 manganese dioxide is fused with potassium hydroxide in the presence of potassium nitrate as an oxidizing agent, it gives a dark green compound A. Compound A disproportionates in acidic solution to give you purple compound B. An alkaline solution of compound B oxidizes potassium iodide to compound C whereas an acidified solution of compound B oxidizes Ki2D. Identify A, B, C and D. It is a two marker question. It means it is very clear that for identification of each of these compound you would be getting half mark and this is a question from D block elements you should know and you will answer this in this manner. If I talk about the first step where MnO2 is fused with KOH in the presence of KNO3 as an oxidizing agent it is giving you dark green compound A. This is the first step and the first reaction is clearly mentioned here. MnO2 magnesium dioxide reacting with KOH and O2 that is coming from KNO3 because KNO3 is acting as an oxidizing agent then you are getting here K2MnO4 potassium magnate and that is a dark green colored compound and that is why you are obtaining this A as your product and you have identified A here further. 
in the second part compound a disproportionate in acidic solution to give purple compound b it means this is the term for identification of b let's check what will happen to a here this a that is k2 mno4 that i'm taking here mno4 two negative ion we have taken in acidic medium they disproportionate to form purple colored mno4 negative ion it means the compound formed in this case is potassium permanganate along with that mno2 and h2o is formed after that what will happen in this case an alkaline solution of compound b oxidizes ki2 compound c whereas an acidified solution of compound b oxidizes ki2 d it means in this case the first step was there in which this b in basic medium converts i negative ion to io3 negative and what's the chemical reaction that's taking place here in this case the chemical reaction you can clearly see i'll just mention this reaction by underlining it have a look on that mno4 negative reacting with iodide ion in aqueous solution in basic medium to give you mno2 and io3 negative ions you are obtaining that's why this iodate ion or simply potassium iodate is the compound c after that in acidic medium it converts i negative ion to iodine it means the reaction that is taking place here is iodide ion you know that reacting with mno4 negative ion it means kmno4 is there in the acidic medium and these are getting changed into mn2 plus manganese ion you are obtaining along with that iodine so simply i2 is the compound d here it means you have identified a b c and d all of them you have identified and that's why for identifying each of them you will obtain half mark so just have a look on the first one a is k2mno4 that is potassium magnate either you write the formula or you write the name you will get the half mark for this further next is potassium permanganate the second thing third is potassium iodate io3 negative ion you obtain in the presence of potassium ion it would be potassium iodate and the last one is iodine that is liberated so as per the marking scheme you will obtain half mark for this this one also this one also and this one also so total two mark for this question will be given to you after that it's a turn for next question that's question number 10